let's just pause for a moment because I want to go back to my story about my, my Christian friend. Um, we left off saying that they had this incredible breakdown and uh, they believed, they absolutely positively believed that it was a uh, demon, demon possession. Well, they ended up in the hospital. They were in the hospital a little bit and then they, they got out of the hospital and tried to get back to life, but it didn't work well. It did not work well. And soon after um, I was with them and they were, again, they were, they were losing it. And I, I'm talking to them and, and so I said, okay, look, we, maybe we need to take you to the hospital because there's all kinds of very, very disturbing thoughts and things happening. So I'm driving them to the hospital and I'm going a different way than they normally would have thought. And they completely freaked out because like, where are you taking me? And you see, that's, that's how bad it was. This is somebody I've known for a long, long time. They trusted me. And, and literally, I, I was driving down the highway. I had to hold their hand and say, look, I've got you. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to get there. We're going there right now. I promise. Stay with me. Stay with me. And I, I had to lock the doors because they're wow. trying to get out of the car. It was, it was paranoid. Yeah. It was just overwhelming. So we get to the hospital and we go into the emergency room and we go up to the window and I ask them to introduce themselves and they do. And I said, listen, I'm their minister and they need help right now. And they responded very well and brought, brought my friend into a room. And this, this poor person was so paranoid. They're looking around and you can see the fear, the utter overwhelming fear in their eyes as the, their eyes are dotted, darting around, looking in the room and not trusting anything or anybody. And they sit down and they put their head down. And now the doctor wants to take them into the other room. There's two police officers standing in the room because this is a suicidal, very, very serious event. So I asked the doctor for a minute. I said, what's your first name? And I'll use Susan for, 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 for an example. And so my friend is sitting there with their head bowed. And, and I, I got down on my knees so I could look them in the eye. I looked up and I said, you trust me, right? You trust me? And they said, yes. You know, they nodded their head. I said, okay. This doctor's name is Susan. I trust Susan. You know, that means that you can trust Susan. Will you trust Susan like I trust Susan? And they nodded their head. And then I just motioned. I said, okay, come. And then they, they then took my friend and took them into the back room to help them. I nearly lost it as I was leaving the room. The, 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 the police officers are just sort of like, holding me, patting my shoulders and saying, it's okay, it's okay. But you know, this was such a dramatic, difficult circumstance. And so they're, 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 they're admitted to the psych ward. And I get the opportunity to go in and sit down with my friend and the psychiatrist. And, it, and again, I signed the release. They allowed me to come in, which was a big blessing. Mm -hmm. And the psychiatrist asks my friend, so what do you think is happening? And they said to the psychiatrist, said, I am, it's demons. The demons have got me and I don't know how to get rid of them. Now, in a psychiatrist, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a mental ward, you know, that's a difficult thing to deal with. So I looked at the psychiatrist. I looked at my friend and I said, can I say something? And the psychiatrist gave me the go ahead. And I looked at my friend, my Christian friend. I said, listen, this is not demons. This is a mental health issue. I need you to trust me. You go to church with me, right? And I explained that this is something from within, not something from on the outside. And this doctor can help you understand it and work through it. Can you trust this doctor? And you and I, we can work on this together. And there was the nod. And it was like, huh. and it's interesting because at that moment, the doctor looks at me. And when my friend is again, looking down and she mouths the word, thank you because it was such a relief to be able to be given the opportunity to do the work that needed to be done. So now we're beginning to get the help. But Rick, how did you know that it wasn't demon possession? Because it was, a. first of all, this person is a Christian. And fundamentally, if you believe in Christ, demons can't touch you. Period. Okay. End of statement. There's a fundamental aspect there. But there was the confusion. There was, it didn't have any of the aspects of, of demon possession. It had every marking of a breakdown, of an absolute complete breakdown. And to me, there was absolutely no question. And just a point at this, at this point of the story is, folks, if you are unsure 
what, what you're dealing with, treat it as though it's a mental health issue because you have to start with that because likely if somebody says they're possessed, that's likely a hint that they're not because demons don't work that way. And we're going to get more into that into our, in our next podcast, actually, a little bit more. But uh, that's just a, a, a basic understanding. Thank you.